Hello again folks, so uh, this is my third video on hypothesis tests for the binomial distribution um, and this time very similar to the critical regions method for lower tail tests we're now going to have a look at uh, doing it for what we call upper tail tests. So we're going to go uh, back to the spinner uh, that we looked at before and these are some results that we've seen in previous videos uh, and earlier we we looked to see whether getting two greens was was few enough greens to decide that the spinner was biased against green <clears throat> but if you look carefully at this at these results there might be something else that you spot because not only are there quite a few uh, very few greens but there are also lots of blues so another question that we might ask ourselves is whether the spinner is biased in favor of blue <clears throat> in other words is there a probability of more than a quarter of getting blue so this is another type of hypothesis test that we could do it says the spinner is spun 20 times and a blue comes up nine times test at the 5% significance level whether the spinner is biased in favour of getting blue. So how do we do this one? Well it starts off exactly the same. X this time is going to be the number of blue results so that is our random variable X. Next thing we have to write down what the hypotheses are. The null hypothesis assumes the default position. It's going to assume that the probability of getting blue is a quarter. The alternative hypothesis this time, what we're testing is to see whether it's biased in favour of getting blue. So our alternative hypothesis this time is going to be that P is greater than a quarter. Next step is our assumption. So assuming that the null hypothesis is true, then this would be the distribution of our random variable. So how does this differ from the last example? Well, if we look, go back to the graph, this time what we're looking for is lots of blues coming up. <clears throat> we want to know uh, what sorts of numbers of blues coming up would convince us that the probability of getting a blue is more than a quarter. So we're looking for numbers up here. Our critical region is going to be that x is greater than or equal to some value for this example rather than down here less than or equal for lower tailed. So you can kind of see why where those names come from. Lower tail has the tail down at this end of the distribution, upper tail has the tail up at this end. Remember that the significance level that we're always given in the question means that the sum of the probabilities in the critical region have to be less than or equal to some value, the significance level. In this case, in this question, less than 5%, so less than 0 0.05. So what we're looking for is for the probability that x is greater than or equal to some value, which we call our critical value, to be less than 5%. Now, unfortunately, uh, on many people's calculator, we can't work out the probability that x is greater than or equal to a value using the binomial distribution. What we can work out is the probability that it's less than or equal to some value. So what we might want to do instead is consider these bars here, these values of x, the ones that are not in the critical region. And it makes sense, hopefully, to you that if these bars, the probabilities in these bars add up to less than 5%, then the probabilities of these bars must add up to more than 95%. So what we can actually use our calculator to do is work out uh, what value here will have a probability of getting less than or equal to this value uh, to have the sum of all of those being greater than 95%. So let's have a look at how that works uh, on our calculator. So here um, we're going to use the list function again. <clears throat> so exactly the same as you did in the for the previous video, uh, but this time put in values from 5 to 10, I would suggest, all right, um, because we know we're looking for quite high values of x. So we, we definitely want higher than 5. If ever you put numbers in and it doesn't come out 
to be uh, to give what you want then you can always go back put more numbers in to try more numbers but if you remember we're looking for if we go back to this graph a minute we want less than or equal to some number to be greater than 95 percent so if you look carefully at yours you should spot that seven the property of less than or equal to seven is just below 95 percent and less than or equal to eight is just above 95 percent and what we wanted was it uh, to be greater than 95 percent so we would have to choose uh, this one all right <clears throat> uh, we can match those up to the actual critical regions which are the blue bits so less than or equal to 7 is 0 0.8981 would tell us that the probability of x is greater than or equal to 8 that's all the other bits would have to be 1 minus that 0 0.1019 similarly less than or equal to 8 just above 95 percent so the rest of it probability that x is greater than or equal to 9 would be just less than 5 percent all right so you can see that this is what we want our critical region is going to be uh, oops, sorry greater than or equal to 9 this one just below 95 percent which means that's just above five percent this one just above 95 percent so this one which is what we want is less than five percent so there is our critical region so that's telling us that the probability <clears throat> that x being great less than or equal to eight is over 95 percent so the probability that x is greater than or equal to nine is just less than five percent <clears throat> so our critical region as i've said is greater than or equal to nine okay so let's go back and think about how we set out our working out we've done the, the first three steps we've now worked out <clears throat> two probabilities just either side of five percent <clears throat> I would suggest you do write down the less than or equal to bits and then the greater than or equal to bits showing the probabilities either side of 5% and then write down the critical region. Next thing we have to do is look at the test statistic to make a decision on the hypothesis, uh, on the null hypothesis. So we were told that a blue came up nine times. So is nine in the critical region? Well, yeah, nine is greater than or equal to nine. So it is in the critical region. We can say that there is evidence to reject the null hypothesis. So what does that mean in the context of the question? It means there is evidence that the spinner is biased in favor of getting blue. And that's it. Uh, let's just remind ourselves of the steps so we first of all write down the variable we then write down both the hypotheses and then we assume that the null hypothesis is true and write down the distribution we work out our critical region using our calculator we then look at the test statistic to make a decision about whether or not to reject the null hypothesis and then we finally write the conclusion in the context of the question <clears throat> and that's it okay let's look at one more example and um, so here we've got uh, an example that says a drugs sorry drugs are known to cure a particular disease 35 percent of the time a company tests a new drug which they believe will get better results in their test seven patients were cured out of 12 test the company's claim at the one percent level okay so first thing we have to do is write down the variable in this case x is going to be the number of patients that are cured uh, next one uh, the hypotheses well the null hypothesis is going to assume that nothing's changed so p equals 0 0.35 the alternative well they believe that it will get better results so the alternative is going to be that the probability that someone is cured is greater than 0 0.35 next bit we assume that the null hypothesis is true and write down the distribution of x so we can assume that x is distributed binomially n is 12 p is 0 0.35 next bit 
lots of calculations on your calculator to work out the critical region. So have a go and hopefully <clears throat> you're going to find that less than or equal to 7 is just below 1%. Uh, sorry, uh, so uh, should look at the significance level. Important to look at that. So 1% significance level. So we're looking for either side of 0.99, 99%. So this one just below 99%. This one just above 99% which means this one is just below, uh, sorry, just above 1%, this one is just below 1%. So we need our critical region to be below 1%, so our critical region must be x is greater than or equal to 9. Is our test statistic in that? Well, we can see 7 patients were cured, the critical region is x is greater than or equal to 9, so 7 is less than 9, it is not in the critical region. Therefore, there is no evidence to reject H0. Put the conclusion in context, we can say there is no evidence that the new drug will get better results. And that's it. Um, so hopefully that gives you an idea about how we can use hypothesis tests for uh, upper-tailed test problems. Okay, thank you.